Good morning and welcome to St. Michael and All Angels on this feast day of Pentecost and a special welcome to all of our guests for our baptisms today. Our worship continues on page one. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord God's all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyre, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and misty smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Please be seated. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and Pentecost is one of those festivals that we celebrate throughout the, the year, and Pentecost is often called the birthday of the church. And the birthday of the church really roots itself back to this moment when the disciples received the Holy Spirit. And I think many of us are sort of familiar with this story. Basically, God created the world, and it was good, and it was perfect, and humanity just couldn't quite hang with God's vision and God's hope. And so God sent Jesus, and Jesus called our attention back to the best of what God hopes for us to bring us back into this completeness and wholeness with God. And after Jesus ascended back into heaven, God sent the Holy Spirit to be with Jesus' followers. We hear that story today where Jesus' followers are huddled together in a room and there's this loud wind and fire falls upon their heads but does not burn them and fills them up with this spirit, fills them up with this Holy Spirit and sends them out into the world to do these things they didn't think they could do that surprise them, speaking in different languages. One of my favorite lines in all of Scripture is they're not drunk, it's just 9 a.m. And I think they haven't met Episcopalians yet. So Pentecost is that moment when God fills up the followers of Jesus to go and do these amazing things, these different things. And as they do that, they create what we know as the church. So on this birthday of the church, I'm reminded that we pray whenever we have Pentecost. We pray whenever we baptize new people into the church. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We kind of like this idea of the Holy Spirit. We want some of that. But do we? You see, the Holy Spirit's a little scary. The Holy Spirit forces us to go and do stuff that we don't know we can, that maybe we don't want to do. The Spirit, when it fills us up authentically, sends us out into the world in a way that is different than the lives that we had. 
And for many of us, that's perhaps actually not as interesting as we might want it to be. See, the Holy Spirit is a disrupting force, not something comforting. The Holy Spirit makes us change, and Lord knows we don't really like change, especially church people. Church people don't like change because we kind of like the stuff we have. And change means we're going to lose something that we like. See, the Holy Spirit does not come to solve problems. The Holy Spirit comes to create problems that then we have to deal with. Think about the disciples in this story. They were happy, basically, doing whatever they were doing, and then Jesus comes along and calls them to follow him, and they're like, oh, okay. And so they sort of leave their stuff, and they follow Jesus, and they like Jesus, and Jesus is a nice guy, and he's healing some stuff, and then he resurrects from the dead, and he ascends into heaven. Like, that's great. And then, wouldn't it have been easy for them to just go back to all the stuff that they liked? go back to their families, go back to fishing, going back to that simple life. And I imagine they may have sort of been thinking that, because this is not long after Jesus' ascension. This is not long enough for them to have gone all the way back home just yet, and they're sitting there in that little room, and they're thinking about how they might get back to that simple life. And then the Holy Spirit comes and messes all that up forever. See, Jesus had only messed it up a little, but the Holy Spirit messed it up for good. And these people had to live in this new way, live a life that they did not know how to live, all because the Holy Spirit created this new problem. And if that wasn't big enough, the Holy Spirit does not come to prevent failure. This is perhaps the hardest thing about the Spirit. You see, maybe we can abide by change. Maybe we can leave something behind if we have some idea that things are going to work out. But you see, the Holy Spirit does not prevent failure. In fact, the Holy Spirit forces us into a life that we don't know how to live, to do things we don't know how to do. And that means we're going to fail. And then we're going to fail again. And then we're going to fail again. We don't like to fail. And if we don't know that we're going to succeed and do something well, we are almost certainly not going to try. See, the birthday of the church might sound nice, but the Holy Spirit is one big, sacred, and holy pain in the butt. And yet the Holy Spirit is what God gives us. The Holy Spirit is what God fills us with. And when we are faithful, when we follow the lead of the Spirit, we actually become the people that God dreams us to be. You see, Pentecost is really at its root about dreams. Dreams are a weird thing. And I don't mean dreams like you have at night. I mean visions and hopes, dreams for the future. Adults, don't often dream enough. For many of us, I think dreams are left within the auspices of childhood. If you ever talk to a child, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? Most of the time, their dreams are huge. And for adults, we have to resist saying, like, that's not possible, right? I want to dream. I'm going to live on Mars. And adults are like, yeah, you're not. But the kid thinks he will. Kids dream these big, impossible dreams. But somewhere along the lines, adults figure out that dreaming is a little too, what, scary? Dreams might set us up for failure. That dreams become something that we leave behind when we get smart and able. And perhaps the Holy Spirit is calling us into new kinds of dreams, and not just for ourselves, but for our community. Now, some of us maybe aren't part of the St. Michael community sitting in these pews yet. We'd love for you to be. But part of what St. Michael is, is an opportunity for us to dream together. 
part of what a church should be is this kind of holy laboratory where we listen to the Spirit and we feel the Spirit move and we dream about things that might not be possible, and then we try to reach those dreams and we fail. And then we try again, and hopefully we fail better. And we keep failing better. And every time we try something new, we get just a little closer and a little closer to what God really hopes for us. So I was thinking about this idea. It reminded me a few weeks ago, have you all watched this documentary on National Geographic called Free Solo? Have you seen this? This is nuts. This guy named Alex is a free climber, a rock climber, mountain climber. And this documentary is about how he free soloed, free climbed, which means no ropes, El Capitan, which is over 3,000 feet tall. It has never been done And he, being this phenom climber, decided that he was going to do it without ropes. Obviously, he makes it to the top. But as I was watching this documentary, every time something happened as he was climbing this rock wall, I would kind of (gasps) go, and I had to keep reminding myself, he lives, he is not going to fall, he is not going to die. But if you put yourself in his shoes, he is a good climber. Okay, there's that. But nobody has done what he tried to do before. And he just decides to do it. And so the documentary shows how he prepares for this moment. That's the first time anything like that had been done. And as he's preparing for this moment, he expects one morning, he will just wake up and say, today's the day and then go. And if he failed, this isn't a failure in which he gets to try again. If he fails, he's toast, and yet he tries anyway. And watching someone like that attempt something so bold, so daring to fulfill this dream that he had that has never been done, kind of feels to me like what we should all be doing here. God is good, and God has brought us here, not to just be comfy in our pews, not just to say some prayers and sing some songs or to hug a friend. God's brought us here to do a whole lot more than we think we can. God has brought us here to start a journey that is based on this dream and this vision of something bigger than we ever think that we can do, bigger than we ever think we can be, and that we are not alone. We are here to dream big. The Spirit wants to break in. And when we pray, come Holy Spirit, come, I want you to be ready for the Holy Spirit to come in you And that when the Holy Spirit does, it's going to screw lots of things up, make you do things that you didn't think you could, make you fail in ways you never thought you would. And all because God wants something so good for the world he loves so much. And so in this new season, this Pentecost season, let's not take a break from our faith just because it's the summer. Let's begin a new phase. Let's begin a dreaming phase. And when we dream, never be afraid of what God reveals to you. Because we know, we know, with God, all things are possible. Happy Pentecost. Amen. As we prepare to sing our hymn, know that our vergers will come and help our baptismal families come forward. And as we sing, all children are invited to come up and have a front row stand here at the rail to witness the baptisms. And so standing as you are able, let us sing together hymn 296 verses 1 and 2.
Our service continues in your Red Book of Common Prayer on page 301. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. I'll start with you. I present Riel Sage to receive the sacrament of baptism. Uh -huh. Will you all be responsible for seeing that the children you present are brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will. And will you, by your prayers and witness, help these children to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will. And now, on their behalf, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? And do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? And do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? And do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? And do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? And now will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these children in their life in Christ? And now let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. And will you persevere in resisting all evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. And will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will. And will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. Let us now pray for these children who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, 
that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the baptisms. Hello. Can you come to me? Here, come here. Good job. Want to feel this? Feel the water? Look, see. Yes. <laughs> Name this child. Brielle says. All right, Brielle, can you lean over? Here we go. Brielle, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job. Brielle Sage, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive this as a sign of the new light within you. That's for you. You want it? There you go. Good job. To me? Yes. Look. Name this child. Caroline Ann. Caroline Ann. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Caroline Ann, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive this as a sign of the new light within you. Amen. Come here, buddy. Hello. Name this child. Hunter David. All right, Hunter, here we go. Hunter David, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job. Hunter David, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive this as a sign of the new light within you. Amen. Good job. Hello. Oh, hello. Are you sure you're going to do that? <laughs> yeah. All right, name this child. Elizabeth Ann. Elizabeth Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good job. Elizabeth Ann, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Receive this as a sign of the new light within you. Congregation, please rise. Continuing on page 308, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, and a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. 
Amen. Continuing on page 308, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All right, everyone, have a seat whenever you're finished, but we have a baby parade for you. So come on, walk them all down. Let's go. Good. As everyone finds their seats once more, I want to say welcome once again to St. Michael and All Angels on this Pentecost Sunday. We are very glad you're here. And if you are new or visiting with us, we want you to know you are very welcome and we'd love to get to know you better. And so I want you to grab the communication card that's in the pew back in front of you, fill that card out, drop it in the offering plates or hand that card to the usher after the service and we will be in touch. A few announcements I want to bring to your attention. First off, our summer Sunday school series that is faith in media, movies, books, music, continues in the St. Michael Chapel right after this service. Today, Greg Pickens is going to be looking at Antonin Scalia's book on faith, and we'd love for you to join him for that session. And this continues every Sunday, unless we have a special event like we do on June 30th, which is Pi for the 4th of July. So on June 30th, we'd love for you to join us at 10 a.m. either after the 9 or before the 11 to just eat pie outside because that's what we do for the 4th of July. And so it'll be nice and fun. Otherwise, we've got this education series that continues at 10 a.m. every Sunday throughout the summer. Also, we kicked off our pub theology series, which is Monday nights at the Bar Over and Mockingbird Station. There's information in your bulletin. We have provocative topics and speakers each Monday night in the month of June. And last week, we were filled to capacity at the bar, and it was really excellent. And so we hope that you all will join us and bring a friend or a neighbor who may be interested in exploring their faith in some new ways. Again, that's in your bulletin so you know where to go and when. And finally, as many of you know, one of the pre here at St. Michael, Lisa Musser, is leaving at the end of June, and on June 23rd, we will celebrate the ministry that she had here at St. Michael. And so we'd love for you to join her and her family for the 9 a.m. service, where we will have a blessing moment, and then also the reception that will follow in the parlor at 10 a.m. Again, all of this is in your bulletin, so take it home, mark it down, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the summer here at St. Michael. Now let's continue our worship. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our worship continues on page five of your service booklet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Father, we ask your blessing, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, 
and feed upon him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
We continue on page six of your service booklet. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.